I knew I was going to regret in the last video claiming I was 99% done with wiring. <laughs> um, honestly, I probably wasn't that far off, uh, but even 1% in a project this size is still a substantial amount of work. Right now I'm wiring up the ELT. Now I don't have an ELT, but I have decided which ELT I'm gonna get. And in fact, I'm probably gonna wind up placing an order for that and several other final components for the build soon. Knowing what ELT I have means I know exactly what I need to run from the aft of the plane where it's gonna sit all the way forward um, and which connectors it's gonna pin into. I'm being a little extra here. Um, there are some grounds that I could probably locally ground in the back of the plane uh, for the ELT and, and other items that I have chosen to route all the way back to either the main ground here um, or the one on the front side of the firewall uh, to prevent ground loops. Um, I know that you can, again, get away with a lot of local grounds for certain items. For some reason, I'm terrified of ground loops and I have decided that you know, whether it's extra work or extra wire or not, everything is going to come back to here for the most part. I say for the most part because there are a couple components that have integral grounds uh, that just ground themselves out. For example, the antennas, the uh, outside air temperature, there are some items that, that will just ground right where they're mounted. All right, I'm gonna keep working on this last 1%, uh, and then from there, I get to start tidying up these bundles and really securing everything, uh, cleaning up the plane and mounting, uh, hard mounting some of the pieces to the airframe. Very exciting. If you're looking for a surefire way to know if you're done with a connector or not, just throw a zip tie on it. Nine times out of ten, you'll have to cut that zip tie right off because you'll figure out something you forgot to do. So what I'm doing here is I'm hooking up the ELT. Now, I've mentioned uh, this is something I procrastinated on the wiring for because I hadn't quite mapped it out. Um, and I feel like there was good reason. It's actually kind of convoluted how this is going to work. The ELT is going to be in the back. The ELT is pretty self-contained, um, but it does need to get uh, location information from the system up here. And I also need to install a switch on the dash for testing uh, or to manually arm it if I ever am in that situation. This creates for some weird wiring. Uh, I've got a three strand that's gonna come up and it's gonna grab uh, location information from the GDU. But that three strand also has two strands that need to go to the far end of the panel for the switch. And so I'm actually gonna break out two of those wires, double back into a shielded two strand to chase it over to that switch. Now, it probably doesn't need to be shielded, but that's really the only two stranded I have on hand and matches everything else, so why not? Uh, I'm gonna do some pretty creative um, splicing techniques here. Uh, hopefully you guys don't give me too much crap, but I think it's about as clean as I can come up with. So let's take a look at what it looks like. Now I just gotta chase the two strand over to the other side. Like I said, it's a bit unconventional, but um, I think it does the trick. I gotta say, I'm absolutely just tickled that it's illegal to transport the ELT via aircraft, but also illegal for my plane to fly without it. That is government regulation in a nutshell. All right, I am excited to, to finally hit the project again and to be back filming um, a little more. I have worked here and there when I've had some time, but some things have called me away for a bit. Um, and when I have worked, I haven't filmed much because it's been much of that running wires and eh, just the 
boring stuff that I promise not to show too much of. But while I've been out, I've been gathering up some fantastic, exciting supplies um, that's going to allow me to focus on the installation of these one by one. And I'm really excited to bring you the next series of episodes uh, just detailing what I ordered, uh, what, what these pieces are, why they're going in the plane, why I made the choices I did. These remaining pieces that I ordered are really what I like to think of as, as just the final steps in the electronics and avionics. Um, they're not necessarily Garmin boxes and that's why they weren't purchased to date. Um, but they're, they're just as, as necessary for the completion of the wiring and electronics of the aircraft. So I went ahead and I pulled the trigger, I bought a ton of stuff, and it's going to be very exciting to get it all wired up and put in the plane. Alright, so what exactly did, did I order? Uh, a little bit of everything. To start, I got a carbon monoxide detector. This is a critical piece of equipment, a piece of safety equipment. This is going to warn us if carbon monoxide uh, enters the cockpit and send out some warnings. Uh, via different methods and we'll get more into to exactly how the one I chose functions uh, a little bit later. Also necessary both from a wiring aspect and well the flight aspect are the control grips. Um, I got two control grips for my plane. These are something that I had sort of mentally planned on purchasing uh, for a long time and knew the functions that I wanted on my stick uh, well before I ordered them so so the wiring is going to match up pretty well here um, but they do need to get wired in and installed and tested. In addition to that, I finally got my lighting ordered. Again, I, I knew the lighting package that I wanted, um, I believe ever since I built the rudder, and I've had the tail light since I built the rudder, but I added the rest of the lighting kit um, with that, and we will get those assembled, not necessarily installed, but certainly tested. The last item on the list is an ELT. This is the one that took probably the most research of mine uh, to figure out which I wanted and how I needed it configured. I can't wait to get into the details of that and get it installed with y'all. Uh, in addition to that, the usual Stein order, some more wires, some more connectors, uh, and one other item that I needed from them were some new PMAG switches because the ones that I had purchased will not work. And I'll show you why, and if you're doing PMAGs, what you need to look for in your switches. All of this coming up, um, but to start, we're gonna get the carbon monoxide detector hooked up and wired into the Garmin system and configured. So let's get to it. All right, the first item on the list is the carbon monoxide detector. Um, I went with this Aether Shield. Uh, it's called the EX 2.0. I chose it for a number of reasons. The main is that it doesn't require any additional modification to my panel. Now, I'm not opposed from modifying my panel. What I am opposed to is having too much crap on there that I don't want. And I, I really wanted to go with the streamlined look for the panel. I've mentioned that before. I loved that this unit plugs directly into the Garmin system and can do a, a readout of you know, the carbon monoxide levels straight through the Garmin system. Now most will do that, but they also, uh, a few of them, have this accompanying little readout that goes next to your PFD or, or somewhere, and I just, I didn't want that. I didn't want the hassle. There is added features that you can download an app, I believe both for the watch and for the phone that will not only provide warnings uh, for the carbon monoxide levels, but also tie into uh, if your watch has the feature of the pulse oximeter um, and, and give you a readout there. That was not high on my list of features. Now I'm a nerd, so I, I'm inevitably gonna wind up hooking it up and checking it out. Um, but that's more of a, a secondary perk for me than was the simplicity of the installation uh, and design of this unit. Installation is going to be pretty easy. I got three wires. I'm going to add a separate connector. We'll connect that into a pigtail that goes into uh, the GEA24, I believe. I'll get it mounted to the sub panel and we'll get it configured on the Garmin G3X system and we'll keep cruising. Let's take a look. So the first step uh, is to get the connector going on the unit and then create, as I called it, a sort of a pigtail with that same connector uh, and some three strand wire going into the GEA24 and we'll get this thing plugged in and then mechanically fastened to the sub panel. Uh, and then I think at that point, we're just gonna warm up the old G3X and, and get this shit configured. Now, I know in the past I've, I've indicated that like, I like all my things to match and I want all the same uh, boxes and, and switches and connectors. Uh, so I may lose some of you here, but I went out and I got a different connector for this unit. Uh, and the main reason is the Dutch connectors or Deutsch connectors, I don't remember how to say that. Um, they're simply a little too big for this purpose. I went with a uh, Molex micro adapter for this. And so 
This one's going to be a bit out of the norm, um, but I, I thought it just worked best to keep a small connector back behind where this thing's going to be mounted. So I think you can see why it's advantageous to keep some of these connectors unassembled. Uh, we're still plugging things into it and to have to undo tape and screws every time would be a nightmare. I am, however, finishing up whatever I can as we cut through the last bit of this wiring and it's just itching on me to start to get some coordination to my cables. Um, you can see down here where I worked on the uh, switches, getting those nice and, and tidied up. I can't wait to do that to the rest of the aircraft. All right, 18, 19, Now this is more screens and uh, configuration than I'm comfortable making you sit through on this video, but I assure you it doesn't take long and it's relatively straightforward. I was really impressed with uh, not only the instructions to set this up, but how easy Garmin makes it to, to add a module like this. Very cool. Not great. Uh, I'm getting a reading of 250 parts per million. Uh, either I have a carbon monoxide problem in here or I have an installation problem. So I'm gonna have to dig into this and make sure I wired everything correctly. Now watch what happens while I've got my head on the other side of the screen poking around at the wiring. Turns out my wiring, not so bad after all. Uh, my ability to read the instructions called into question this time. Uh, the reason why the meter was maxing out at 250 is because it simply does that for one minute when it's first initialized. Uh, this is a test function of the unit itself. 
if you let it sit, it eventually lowers itself back to where it should be. Um, in my case, I think I'm getting a baseline reading of about four parts per million. I used rib nuts uh, to attach this simply out of kind of laziness. I didn't want to go through all the work of uh, an actual nut plate. And this thing's super light. And I think just this most straightforward, easy approach to get it mounted was the best. And in this case, the rib nuts came uh, to the rescue once again. Well, that. That's done, uh, and, and that's uh, one of very few items left uh, until I really start to button up this avionics package. You're gonna wanna be subscribed to catch the next ones. I think I'm gonna crack into these lights next, which is exciting. Uh, not only do we get to install the lights, you get to make them from scratch. And for most of you, I know um, that probably sounds like a chore. For a nerd like me, uh, it's heaven. So stay tuned, uh, subscribe if you wanna catch that one, and we'll, we'll see you next time on Ryan Flies.